Well, look at that. You just hit 60. Are you ready for Endgame? Yeah, but what should I do first? Great question. First off, congrats on hitting 60. There are lots of things you can do in your life, and you chose the waste days of it by playing Classic WoW. I applaud you for that. But Endgame is a whole different beast from leveling because it's a lot more focused on community aspects of the game. While you're leveling, you can play solo pretty much all the way, but good luck getting anywhere by yourself at Endgame. <laughs> So let's go over some tips on the first things you should do after hitting 60 to progress on your adventure. Number one is attunement quests. Molten Core, Blackwing Lair, and Anixius Lair all require attunement quests in order to enter. Molten Core is easy, all you gotta do is just click on a stone thing in BRD, but the Onyxia quest chain is well known for being this long, drawn out quest chain that requires you to invest a lot of time. But these should be something you should have on your radar because you don't want to be the one guy in raid that didn't get attuned. Guys? You also might want to look into getting some keys for dungeons. Specific ones include Stratholme, Skolomance, Blackrock Depths, and Upper Blackrock Spire. These doors can be opened by a picklocking rogue, but if you don't have one, being the one guy in your group that has the key will not only make them love you, but also secure your spot in the party. To get these keys, you gotta do some quests or kill certain bosses, and if you want a more in-depth look on how to get these keys, you can check out a video by my ClassicWow.Live friends, Def Camp and Melderon. The link will be in the description. While you are doing these dungeons, you can also start gathering up some gear. And this is where you need your boys to start farming that pre-raid best in slot. What's up? Are you seriously getting your pre-raid best in slot? By yourself? Nah, I'm with my boys! <laughs> Pre-raid best in slot are the best in slot items you can get without jumping into a raid. You can find lists of these items online, but not all of your best in slot items are going to come from dungeons. Some parts come from quests like In Dreams, which is a difficult quest from Western Plaguelands. Put your faith in the light, and all is possible. <laughs> Crafted items are something you want to get your hands on too. The Devosaur set, the Lionheart helm, and the Black Dragon shoulders, and a whole ton of more items are going to be expensive items that you can't make yourself, and you'll need to find someone that will make it for you. And you need to find an enchanter to enchant that gear which isn't cheap either. That's why when you hit 60 you should also try and find a steady income of gold. Getting lots of gold can be done by farming mobs that drop valuable loot, but another route people go is professions. You can sell those highly sought after items people look for, or you could just make it for yourself. In order to craft some of these highly sought after items, you need to find the recipes too, so that's going to be a big part of making money in the first place. Typically these recipes are really rare, or really, really expensive. Cooking and fishing are also sleeper hits that you shouldn't ignore. Personally, as a healer come classic, I'll probably be fishing my butt off as my source of income, since I can't really kill mobs that well. I am Azara! I was destined to rule! No force can bind me! I know who you are, rude little bitch. Yeah! Gathering professions are also a great way to make some money, especially in the early game. Being the guy that sells all the Devilosaur leather, thorium ore, or Black Lotus will net you some good money. Snooze you lose! See you later, idiot! Fuck you say to me, you little shit! <laughs> how are you how are you not in fucking school? Uh, uh, Wait, wait. Where'd he go? Wait up! Hold on, wait! Wait, I'm coming! <laughs> Getting your epic mount should also be something you should think about. This is another reason why you should find a source of gold. It costs a thousand gold to get an epic mount, which is a lot in Classic WoW, so it's not cheap. But the bonuses of having an epic mount is great for a PvP server. You can catch up to enemy players or easily run away since you're 40% faster. In Battlegrounds, it's also a huge advantage against the enemy if they're still on a slow mount. Also, as much as I love Classic WoW and I'll sing its praise from the rooftops, like 60% of the gameplay is, uh...
Yeah, so if you can speed up this time, you'll be able to do a lot more things in a shorter amount of time. Lastly, you can travel around Azeroth and get all of those useful items you might have missed. Classic is very unique to other versions of the game because items and trinkets play a really big role in combat, especially in PvP. The nifty stopwatch, the title charm, the Lufa, and a thousand other items all are super helpful to have in PvP situations, and it should only take an evening to gather a good amount of them. If you're interested more about these items, I'm just going to leave a link in the description. These items are great for PvP, but if you want them to be useful, uh, you gotta be good at PvP, so keep that in mind. <laughs> you think you can stop me? Not when I have 15 items that I have no idea how to use effectively! <laughs> okay, so what should you do when you hit 60? You should get those attunements and that best in slot gear so you can tackle some dungeons. Get a good cash flow and a beautiful white stallion, and consider collecting all of those little gadgets around Azeroth so you can be a master of PvP. There's a lot to do at Endgame, so take it all in, have some fun, and don't forget to get those Professor Plums. <laughs>